Helldivers 2 has just had the biggest update yet. I have spent all day testing the new changes so that I can bring you a full and easily digestible breakdown of the most important and biggest changes that have been implemented as part of patch 1.000.2. For your viewing convenience, as represented in the chapters below, I've split this video up into four main categories. We shall firstly be reviewing brand new additions to the game, then we'll be testing all the new balancing that includes weapons, stratagems and enemies etc. Next up we'll take a look at the full list of fixes, and finally review all the known issues that will hopefully be resolved imminently in upcoming patches. So firstly, there has been two big additions to the game. Straight away, you'll see that the level cap has been increased from 50. In fact, this now goes all the way up to level 150. And all the additional experience that you've been gaining behind the scenes has been granted to you to reflect this. I know this has caused some controversy with some players because they wanted that dopamine hit of every single level from level 50 all the way to level 150. Personally though, I think this is great because I'm really glad to know that all of that extra experience I've been earning didn't go to waste. It's nice to know that it was being tracked and it has been banked and now we get this big level boost with some players already being level 100 plus. And the next big important addition is two new weather effects affecting many planets. Most of the footage you'll see today is on a planet with the new planetary hazard Sandstorm. I don't think I really saw many, but you will notice the more you play on these planets, as it says, dense sandstorms reduce mobility and greatly reduce visibility for both enemies and friendly units. And next up though, not one I could test yet because there aren't currently any planets active with this environmental condition is blizzards. Intense blizzards reduce mobility and moderately reduce visibility for both enemy and friendly units. They're the three big additions, though arguably most of the balance changes we are about to discuss could also be viewed as additions because it's going to completely change up the meta, for better or for worse. And I am particularly frustrated because I was halfway through a very long video where I was reviewing the new and updated list of best weapons. And that's all completely gone out the window, so I'm going to start that again. However, if you do want to make sure you catch that video as soon as it's released, please consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you so much for doing so. So now let's talk about all of the new balance changes. The first few come in the form of missions and mission objectives. Starting with the Retrieve Essential Personnel mission, the enemy spawn points have been moved further away from the objective, which I know people have been asking for since this was first implemented. I'm so happy about this. As it states, this gives players a fairer chance of defending the location. There are also fewer civilians required to complete the mission on higher difficulties. Both, I'm sure you'll agree, very welcome changes. And also for the mission type Destroy Command Bunkers, now this has more objective locations. It was too easy before in comparison to other missions and people were farming it. So now it'll be much more of a challenge and also it can now appear in operations from difficulty level 5. The final mission modifier balance, which is something I'm so darn excited about, is the fact that complex stratagem plotting and orbital fluctuations have both had their negative modifier halved. So these are nowhere near as taxing on you as they were previously. As you can see with orbital fluctuations, stratagem cooldown is now increased by 25% instead of 50% and complex stratagem plotting now sees your call-in time increased by 50% instead of 100%. Both of these I felt personally were ridiculous, so this now seems pretty fair. Now let's talk about all of the new weapon and stratagem balances. I'll blitz through these as quick as I can because the point of this video is to keep it quick and concise for you and there is a heck of a lot to get through. So, starting with the stratagems, the arc thrower has had its charging inconsistencies fixed. What that means is it would fully charge and be ready to fire after random sporadic periods of time. Now, it always takes exactly one second to charge. Also, it's had its distance reduced from 50 meters to 35 meters, which some people see as a nerf, but honestly, 50 meters was far too far. 
honestly, apart from the sniper rifles, rockets, spears, stuff like this, you don't need to shoot 50 meters away. 35 is still loads, as you can see here. And also, the reason I believe this has been buffed is the third change to the arc thrower. It now has increased stagger. As you see here, it's even staggering berserkers. And this is very important because of something else that now can no longer stagger the berserker. So the arc thrower, trust me, is very, very powerful. Next up, the anti-material rifle just had a straight up damage increase by 30%. It doesn't have any more armor piercing. I know quite often armor piercing and damage can get muddied and confused in this game. So things that it's ineffective against, it is still ineffective against. But things that it can kill, it can now kill way faster. And honestly, I had a lot of fun with this in testing. So the anti-material rifle, definitely one to watch out for now. The guard dog now restores full ammo from supply boxes. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't realize this thing ever completely ran out of ammo anyway. I thought it always just went into your backpack to reload, but apparently the amount of reloads in your backpack can run out. But now supply boxes will fully replenish that. I still think just use the laser. It's so much better. It pretty much never runs out of ammo, but it's made the guard dog a little bit more viable at least. Next up, both the recoilless rifle and the spear have had the number of projectiles increased that you restore from supply boxes. So the recoilless now restores three up from two and the spear now restores two up from one. This is actually huge. This means that you can fully replenish both of these weapons with only two supply boxes, which is in line with grenades, with stim packs, and with most other support weapons. These two weapons just became significantly more viable. In fact, I was loving using the spear because now you can take out a full automaton outpost and you don't need to use four resupplies just to get the ammunition back. So the recoilless and the spear, though they haven't had straight up damage increases, cooldown reductions, anything like that, just increasing the amount of ammo restored from supply boxes is huge. Next up, the heavy machine gun's highest rate of fire mode has been reduced from 1200 RPM to 950. So it runs out of ammo slightly less fast. It's still garbage. I hate it. I'm never going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and the final stratagem is the Patriot Exosuit. Rockets will now only penetrate armor upon a direct hit. So yes, this already garbage, squishy piece of crap has actually been nerfed. And rockets now only penetrate armor if you are very accurate and your enemies aren't moving around. More on the Exosuit later though, because it has had a few buffs and it isn't as bad as it was. Now let's take a look at the weapon balancing. I love almost all of these changes. Some of these weapons now being viable really excites me. So in no particular order, let's start with the Breaker Incendiary. This one has just had a straight up damage increase from 15 damage per bullet to 20 damage per bullet. Because this thing doesn't have the best penetration, it doesn't have the best range, it's not great in many situations, but what it's supposed to be really good for is clearing up swarms of smaller enemies. And of course, it does have that incendiary damage, so it can chip away at larger, even armored enemies as well. So in actual fact, this has had a huge buff. It can even now take out Chargers and Titans with a bit of patience and a bit of luck, and it's fantastic at its primary purpose, which is clearing out swarms of smaller enemies. The Liberator Penetrator hasn't had any kind of stat increase, but it now does have a full auto mode, which at first sounded really good to me. However, all this really does is just emphasize how small its ammo capacity is. It's kind of fun, but you end up just using it in burst mode anyway, so take what you will from this one. The next one though, and my favorite buff, probably my primary weapon now, because this used to be my gamer tag when I was 12, the Dominator has had its damage increased from 200 to 300 and has bonus stagger. This is a beast now. This weapon is truly a force to be reckoned with. The Dominator completely unviable now. Definitely probably top five best weapons now. It's obviously not the best, but it's really viable and it's genuinely super powerful now. I think a lot of people will have a lot of fun with the Dominator. The Diligence Counter Sniper, as it always should have, has been buffed with increased armor penetration. It now has medium armor penetration instead of light, which it always should have, let's be honest. 
though there are still things that it can't penetrate that I really thought it would be able to. And considering it's supposed to be one of the highest damaging weapons in the game, it's still pretty trash, I'm not going to lie. I mean, look at this, it takes nearly a full mag just to shoot the leg off of a bloody strider. I feel like this could definitely still do with some improvements, but it's a start at least. Now for the biggest nerf. The Slugger has had three separate nerfs. It's had its stagger reduced, and you know I mentioned right at the start of this segment how good the arc thrower is now that the stagger has been increased. The stagger has been reduced so much on the slugger it can't even stagger berserkers anymore, whereas the arc thrower can. That alone makes this pretty unusable for me because it's a shotgun, so it's supposed to be used at close range, but it can't even fend off other close range enemies. Berserkers were just messing me up when I tried to use the slugger. Also, damage has been reduced slightly from 280 to 250, and it's had reduced demolition force, meaning you can't use it to blow up crates and containers anymore. Also, not really a nerf, more a bug fix, so I'm not sure why this is in the balance section, but the Slugger, the Liberator Concussive, and the Senator Secondary Weapon have all had their incorrect armor penetration tags fixed in the menu, so they now display their armor penetration correctly. Next up for the balance changes, we'll take a look at armor and enemies. Not many enemy balance changes, and what we do have is a mixed batch, kind of questionable, some welcome, some not. So the Charger's normal melee attack does less damage to the exosuit now. But let's be honest, how often are you fighting the Charger in melee range? Almost always it's going to use its charge, which still one-shots the exosuit. But I must admit, I did get up close and personal and let it whack me a few times, and it doesn't do all that much. So that's a decent change, I guess. Next up, both Bile and Nursing Spewers do less damage with their puke. Thank God! they will stop one-shotting you 99% of the time. However, on the flip side, Bile Titans can no longer be stunned by anything. They are now immune to stun, which is questionable and terrifying. But on the bright side, Shriekers can no longer create bug breaches, and also, once they're already dead, they do significantly less damage if they somehow manage to hit you. And finally, for the balancing changes before we move on to the fixes, some really good news for armor. All heavy and medium armor now protects you better. Wearing heavy armor grants you more or less a further 10% increase to damage reduction on top of what it already granted you. That is 5% for medium armor, whilst light armor and specifically the fortified commando set both remain the same. Now let's take a look at some of the bug fixes, and then we'll discuss the known issues that the devs are still aware of and they're still working on. So there have been a few exosuit changes, for better or for worse. Previously, many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a Helldiver on foot was available for them to target. This was unintended, this was a bug, this has now been fixed, and exosuits will be prioritised and blown up even quicker than before. Now exosuits and hell divers alike can finally open the mini map and place pings without accidentally throwing their grenades, throwing their stratagems and wasting all of their ammo. You can now use the mini map, place your pings down, not worry about what you've got equipped and accidentally blowing up all of your teammates. Also, something that I always suspected, and I'm glad it's been confirmed, both divers and exosuits had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times, making things like automaton rockets far too deadly. It would one-shot you far too frequently. Always thought it was a bit crazy. I thought maybe rockets were just too powerful. It's been confirmed that was a bug. This has now been fixed. This is what was always intended. I'm so glad this has been changed. Next up on the list of fixes, automaton enemy constellations that preferred to spawn more of certain devastator types did not do this. Now they are functioning as they should, so this means when playing on certain systems, you should find that you're now facing far more devastators instead of other enemy types. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't even realise it worked like this. I suspected it, because especially when fighting the Terminids, there are certain systems where you'll just never see a bile spewer, and you'll see loads of charges, or vice versa. So, I do wonder how exactly it determines which enemy types are more prominent in that region. And also, I really enjoy fighting Devastators. I think they're a great enemy type, so I'm looking forward to seeing a heck of a lot more of them. 
Fix number five is that Hellpod steering is now far better, especially once you have the upgrade from the ship modules. Sometimes it would feel like your Hellpod just wouldn't do what you wanted it to do at all. And this, for the most part, is actually system intended. So if you didn't know, what happens is it prevents soft locks where you might accidentally be trying to drop into something unintended where you then wouldn't be able to get out and also dropping on important interaction points. There are certain places you just cannot drop because it would cause chaos and probably stop you from completing the mission. However, there have been lots of improvements made so that you can move your drop pod a lot more freely now and the zones around these unintended and important places have been greatly reduced so you do still have a lot more freedom with your pod and far fewer objects now prevent you from steering. This is however something the devs are still monitoring and they're going to be improving this again and again over the coming patches. And the final big fix is that there were some cases where the ground under certain assets and enemies could be bombed causing them to spaz out and float in midair. Again this has been fixed, this no longer happens. Now for the final part of the video, let's talk about some of the known issues that are still in the game that are actively being worked on. Unfortunately, the game can still crash when picking up snowballs and trying to throw back grenades. So for the most part, don't have snowball fights and if enemies throw grenades at you, just run away from them because there is a chance your game will crash. Also, there's various issues still involving friend invites and cross-play. So cross-platform friend invites might not show up in the friend requests tab. Players can't unfriend players that they've befriended with a friend code. Players can't unblock players that were not in their friends list beforehand. And players can't befriend players with Steam names shorter than three characters. These are all still issues, but the devs are fully aware of them and they are working on fixes. They were just prioritizing gameplay and more important fixes first. Next up, when looking at weapon stats, explosive weapons specifically include only direct damage. They don't take into account explosive damage. Also, explosions don't break your limbs except for when you fly into a rock. This is unintended, and judging by this coming in a future patch, explosions will blow up your limbs as they're supposed to. Also, Planet Liberation appears to reach 100% at the end of every defense mission. Again, this is still being worked on as is when you drown in deep water with the vitality booster equipped it puts you in a broken state this one is bloody annoying and i cannot wait until they fix this and the final two the stratagem beam can attach itself to an enemy but then it will deploy in its original location this one is so frustrating especially when trying to get the achievement where you crush a charger with the supply drop so once this one's been fixed anyone who currently doesn't have that achievement that should be far easier for you to get and finally, still, since the launch of the game, some player customizations like your title or body type may reset after restarting the game. This is still on their to-do list. It's just very low priority at the moment, which is why it hasn't been fixed yet. That is all of the highlights of today's patch. It is huge. Let's get stuck in. If you want some people to play with and you don't have a group of friends that play consistently, jump in my Discord server. There's always teams going on. We can all play together. And with that, my friends, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.